believe what's on God's heart is to really challenge us to be good fathers, like he is a good father. Jesus said, you know, I, I mean, what he said is, be ye perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. I mean, what, uh, you know, we, but if we understand that in the sense that it's God's will, it's our father's will that we be like him. Um, and every good and characteristic and every uh, quality that our Heavenly Father has, he, he, we are supposed to be propagators. I mean, life givers, His life. He's the Father, He birthed us all, right? He birthed us all and He brought life and love and He put you know, Adam and Eve in that perfect garden of Eden and He walked with them and He talked with them and, and there was this life of fellowship with Him and uh, you know, so we are to continue that. We're to continue to walk with God, you know, through Christ now. We walk with him, we talk with him, we love him, and then all of his, the, the qualities of his spirit, the qualities, his love, patience, kindness, and uh, gentleness, uh, fortitude, uh, persistence, what, you know, every good quality is now um, to be present in us as we just fellowship with him. You know, that's our greatest calling, is to, to be with and to be like our Heavenly Father. Everything else is not as important. Because if we get this right, if we abide in Him, if we walk with Him, then in our families, with, you know, with our wives, we're going to be understanding, we're going to be uh, filling that role and in, in supporting them and, and our children, and we're going to be passing that life and that love and that fun and that, that fire um, and the strength, which is sometimes you know, restraining the flesh and just doing and reacting how God wants us to, you know, and just exhibiting how good our Heavenly Father is. And then our, our families get that, our children get that, and they see what life is all about, about these experiences of love and just joy of being together. And that's what we need with our Heavenly Father. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We need to to spend time with him and just learn to love him and do life with him. And then everything else will fall into place. You know, everything else, all the things that we are actually concerned about and, um, you know, our Heavenly Father will take care of that. Because, um, you know, he said that, uh, he, 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 2 Corinthians six eighteen. he says, I will be a father to you and you will be sons and daughters to me says the Lord Almighty. So we're, we're his sons and daughters. We, he's our father. And he's, how does a loving father who is truly capable and good take care of his family and his children in, in, in every way, a good way in every way? And so, you know, his life, we need to spend time with him and to wear his life and we just take on his ways and his nature and that propagates. And so, uh, you know, the, the thing with society and, and, you know, if you look around, even in this wonderful country we're in right here, uh, there's a lot of bad things going on. There's a lot of broken families. There's a lot of uh, violent crimes. There's, and, you know, there's different dynamics to that. But, but I can tell you, I can tell you the underlying cause, um, the greatest factor, or let's say like this, the greatest contributing factor is um, fathers aren't there. In fact, most children in South Africa grow up in an absentee father environment. And that answers a lot of questions as to why things are the way they are. You know, uh, I'm thinking of one even prominent politician here, you know, and, and, and he's so... Um, acting in a in a way which is harmful to people and stuff. And I was just curious, and I researched, and he grew up in a fatherless home. His father took off, and his father, you know, and so he grew up with this kind of, uh, you know, inferiority complex and and disillusion, and not and and you know, so it's it's fatherhood is is a big deal. It's a big thing, and it affects not only. Um, those closest to us, but society. It's the building block. The family is the building block of society. If we say we want to change the world, well, <laughs> guess where it starts? It starts right by being a good father in our, in our household so that our, you know, our wives, our family, our children will grow up with this in a secure environment where um, you know, they, they can see what true love is. 
and what grace is and what what it means to ask for forgiveness and what it means that you know we don't need to be uh, we're not right every time, but when we're not, we acknowledge it and we go back and we humble ourselves and they learn that humility is not a sign of weakness, but it's a sign of strength <clears throat> and it's a sign of, you know, making things right and standing for righteousness and, and what is right and good for everybody and not just keeping up an image or something like that. And so we, you know, we can portray lots of things to the world. But right in our own homes, we, we, they see all, <laughs> right? And that's a good thing because that's the training ground for changing the world by being love and, and making things right and not always needing to be the one who, you know, pushes our way, but we, but we work, but we, we try to see what God wants to do and, and encouraging uh, all to, to, to get on board with what God is doing and, and seeing, seeing our own families flourish and, and children. And then we pass that on. And then we go out, and then we go out and uh, pass the gospel on to the world. Because the people we reach with the gospel and we go out and we share and then they, they, we need to invite them to our homes. They need to be able to see. They need to taste and see that God makes a difference in our families, that God makes a difference in our life, that our Heavenly Father's interaction with us is the reason that uh, you know, we can now just they, they can look at our families or they can look at our situations. And wherever we are and whatever has happened, okay, God can redeem that. And, but I'm just, we just need to know God's heart for our role. That's the purpose in all of this. And so it doesn't matter what situation somebody is in right now and what happened in the past and, and all of these things, but what matters is now getting to know our Heavenly Father. That's the point of this. Getting to know our Heavenly Father so that, so that He can birth within us a new life and then that new life of love and, and his ways is just passed on to, to, to our families and, and to everyone around us. Okay, so there, there's nothing more. So if we want to be a powerful witness for Jesus, it starts by being a good, uh, a good son to our Heavenly Father, listening, spending time with him. He passes on his ways and then we in turn, fill our role as fathers and being a good father and passing on just as our Heavenly Father treats us, then we pass that on. And this is the building block of, of changing the world because it starts right in our homes. If you look at all the things going on and uh, you, you, you can, you'd be able to trace it down to what a father has passed on in the household and mothers and you know what they have passed on and, um, you know, and so it's hugely important, right? <clears throat> in Psalm 103, verse 13, it says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. So what's happening here in this Psalm? 103, 13. Well, let me just put that up there for you. Psalm 103, 13. You like to see the scriptures in front of you there? There we go. Oh, okay, New King Jim, New King James says it a little differently there. Um, let's see. There we go. This is the ESV. So as a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. So, so what's happening here? It, uh, God is pointing to a father and saying, um, as a father, in other words, look to your, your earthly father here. As, as a father shows compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. So, so earthly fathers are supposed to be that uh, modeling that compassion, that love, and the characteristics of God so that people can point to, to, to fathers and say, hey, as as a father has compassion on his children, that's the way the Lord wants to be with you. So when people look at a, uh, people maybe they don't believe in God and they're like, well, you know, what's the point anyway? I mean, you know, well, the point is look at the, the family environment there. Uh, if it's the way God, you know, intended it for it to be, it's like it's, it's, it's fathers having compassion emulating Christ in, in all of his ways. And then people being able to look and say, 
oh yeah, as the fa- as that father's having compassion, that's how the Lord is. And so right there in the Psalms, we 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 see this, and God is using uh, that role of a father as <clears throat> a showcase of how He is. And so it's it's hugely important, right? <clears throat> And so, you know, obviously men are rough and ruddy and, and strong and all of this, but, uh, <clears throat> and that's the way God created us to be, to be pioneers and to be providers and to go in and get things done to make sure the family's protected and, and cared for and, uh, you know, and taking responsibility for things. And we're a little uh, sometimes, you know, uh, less, <laughs> women are more delicate and, and, and soft in general. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and so, so the role of a father was to protect and, and we can take the brunt of more things, you know, that's the way God designed us. Um, and so, so, but, so strength, but strength is not just that, um, you know, that, you know, that, that toughness, but strength is also has to do with, with, um, character. It, it has to do with, um, restraining you know, sometimes emotions that want to crop up and just strength can be taking a humble seat sometimes. Strength can be lifting, lifting up somebody else, even though, you know, we want to, you know, uh, we see what is right and wrong sometimes and you just want to fix it right now. But sometimes when you're dealing with people, uh, you know, there's a, there's a way to do it, which is, it can't be forced, you know what I mean? And so we, we need to, so true strength is not just about here, look at my muscle, you know, or boom, I'm going to force you to do what I want. No, but, but sometimes strength is manifest in um, love, which is going to go a bit slower um, and do things in such a way that will help, you know, our, our kids or somebody else realize something. And, and sometimes that means giving a bit more leeway, even though, you know, it's, we don't necessarily agree. It depends what it is, obviously. But, you know, the, the, the point of being a father is to, to, to nourish and to cherish in such a way that, that um, they realize things, our kids realize things. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, forcing would be a wrong thing. It, de- it depends. I mean, there are certain things that we just need to. But then there's other things that we realize as we go. And so, you know, we, we pray and, and we, we need to be uh, men of prayer and to to um, just emulate the ways of our Father, which will really which will really be a help, and which will inspire um, our families to to do the same. You know, to to see that this is the best way. It's to to rely on the Lord, and so that's true strength. True strength is they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. So it doesn't say they who. F- who just react in, in every situation, but those who wait on the Lord and see, okay, how would the Lord react in this situation? You know what I mean? That's true strength. And that's strength that will help build rather than tear down. And so often we can, you know, each one of us, whether we're, no matter who we are, whether we're fathers or not fathers, it's like with our words, we tear down or we're building up, we're strengthening, we're building or we are, or we're not. And so uh, we need to, you know, for every idle word, we'll give an account, Jesus said, because words are powerful. And a word spoken just like, in the Proverbs, a word just spoken, you know, randomly is not, it, it can do big, you know, damage, actually. In the Proverbs, it says uh, something to the effect of, a word spoken in the right time uh, is like, a, what is that, a, apples of gold on a, a plate of silver or, or something like that. Just a picture of perfection of something so beautiful and so good. So true strength is, is learning to sometimes just not speak right away when something's going on, but actually to take a step back and to say, Lord, how should I react? How do you want me to respond to this? I mean, obviously that's not right. Okay, but how do, how, what's the best way to cause growth in this situation and and to respond accordingly so that's that's actually true strength <clears throat> so we can just look back way in the garden of eden so they were adam and eve were walking with their heavenly father but then they decided to uh, that uh, his words were not very important so they got so so that brought death and destruction into the world and so why do you think the the enemy the devil is so uh, targeting these days, 
the destruction of families. You know, I was um, hearing on the news a couple days ago, a few days ago, uh, the Supreme Court in the U.S., they were ruling on some, um, some, let me take a drink, on some law that was back in the 1960s during the civil rights um, uh, movement and when they brought legislation that was to help women, for example, and they and this law, this particular law was that there should be no discrimination in the marketplace uh, based on if somebody's male or female, and because fe because women were generally discriminated against in the marketplace back then, and and all of that, and so it was a good law to to protect women, and but now uh, these new. Uh, movements which are kind of anti-family and they are targeting you know gender dysphoria and, and uh, they are targeting uh, changing the perceptions of what male and female is oh if you feel like a male then you are if you feel like a female you are it doesn't matter biologically how you were born so that this is the craziness that's <laughs> being uh, propagated by you know the one who wants to destroy families and all of this because families are the picture of God himself. Uh, in Ephesians, um, it's a picture of the relationship that Christ wants to have with his bride, with his church. It talks about this in Ephesians 5, um, that um, the, the two becoming one, male husband and wife, it, it says that's like the relationship that Jesus wants to have with us. And so this family unit, which gives birth then and propagates life, children, and passes on this way of being one, it's about oneness with God. It's about oneness then, husband and wife, with each other that experience that love of God. <clears throat> and then, you know, from that union, life and children are birthed forth, and they are to experience that oneness and union, and that's supposed to propagate into the whole world, and that's supposed to be the building block of society, a healthy society, which where people have moral values and love one another and will do the right thing, you know, even if they can get away with doing something else, but they will do the right thing because it's about loving God and walking with Him, and so why would we consider doing something that is an affront to His character and nature that would be very disappointing? To our heavenly Father, we we wouldn't want to do that, and but this knowledge and this experience, the majority of people don't have today, and so the devil's handiwork in the beginning has affected the majority of people today, where whether they don't think like that, and so but the building block of of propagation of this life of righteousness and this life of experiencing God and doing what is right and what's going to help change the world actually starts with fathers in families and fathers portraying and and being with our Heavenly Father so we're able to pass on the ways of God and, and the mindset of God and the heart of God and what would God do to our in our families and in our children and being an example of that not just in word but but you know and look we're all <laughs> <laughs> Me, number one, we're all learning, we're all growing, so it's not about condemnation today, about, oh my gosh, I'm really, but it's what it is about, is about knowing what God has called us to, and being willing to take, to say yes to that, and be willing to make whatever changes we need to make to, to, to progress towards the goal that God has for us. Life is all about going somewhere. It's about going with God somewhere. It's about going deeper into our relationship with Him. It's about, you know, establishing His ways, which are perfect in this earth. And then it's about just, you know, walking with Him and, and with our families and, and just... Uh, so it's not a random thing where we just kind of like, you know, but there is a straight and narrow path, as Jesus put it. And it's the path of life. And if we stay on that path of life, then it, it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And life has meaning and purpose, and we see the fruit of it, even in society and discipling nations. We're called to disciple nations. But we've got to get this right, first of all, <laughs> you know, right in our families. And then uh, as we get that right, the, the nations and the people will see, yeah, there, there's something to this, what they're saying.
So um, <clears throat> the devil is attacking these. Okay, so yeah, back to this uh, Supreme Court decision. So um, they they put in this law to to protect uh, women from discrimination in the marketplace. But now these movements, which is the enemy is fueling, which is whose purpose is to actually destroy. Um, you know, the roles of man and woman and just confuse them and confuse the children and teach them in test book, textbooks that, you know, you know, teaching a small child that, yeah, you know, uh, being male or female is, is more about how you feel and it's not by, it's cra you know, crazy stuff, right? And how is that going to bring confusion into a, a little child's mind? So, so these types of movements, they've then uh, took a, a case to the Supreme Court to challenge that law, which was identifying or the application was what is male what is female you know what is gender and so they determined that that gender is determined by basically how you feel and all of that and so they basically undid the good that was done by that original law which was to protect women but now they say well that will also protect people who are uh, biological males who then identify as women so and so it's like they've they've injected this um, in, inaccurate definition of what it means to be male or female uh, into law, which will then be used and propagated in textbooks, in schools, in further uh, decisions, which will be weaponized um, against Christian values and, and the building blocks of society. And so, so there is a, an attack going on in this world um, against God's ways and the ways of, of life. And, and, that, and it's a direct attack on, on families and the role of fathers and mothers. And, and uh, it's a beautiful thing, but the enemy is trying to, to confuse that, that issue. Um, <clears throat> a little side note here. Uh, because we're you know talking these days also, and we'll get back to that too, studying the book of Revelation and Bible prophecy and uh, and all these things. But just about that, in Daniel eleven thirty seven, it talks about something about the Antichrist actually, and one of the things that he is um, going to be, you know, one one thing about him is this in verse thirty seven. This is Daniel eleven thirty seven says, he shall pay no attention to the gods of his fathers. Um, whoop, sorry, let me go back to now New King James here. says, he shall regard neither the god of his fathers nor the desire of women, nor regard any god, for he shall exalt himself above them all. Okay, and it's very interesting. Um, it says he will not regard the desire of women. Now, after this law in the Supreme Court was ruled upon, or rather it's not the law that was ruled upon, it was the interpretation of what, uh, what it means to be a male or female. And since that is confused now, and it means basically nothing, so a man can identify as a woman, and, and so, so basically that, you know, some women, some prominent women, even some who you wouldn't ex have expected, uh, they, they stood up and they said, this is nuts, you know, then there, how can you now blur the lines between a man and a woman? And it's like now you're going to have uh, men identifying as women going using women's bathrooms and or, you know, putting them. So so women will actually be in jeopardy. Um, and so the desire of many of these women was don't do this. Don't interpret that a man can be a woman if he feels like it. You know, that's going to put us in danger in situations too. And so, so I thought this scripture, this scripture just kind of popped into my mind when I heard that ruling on that law um, where it says, yeah, that the Antichrist will not uh, regard the desire of women. So it, it seems like this just was foretold that, you know, there will be an attack on um, the gender roles and all of that. Okay, let's get back to... There's a little parentheses there. All right, so the devil just hates that that when two, when a man and a woman in, a, in, a, in that marriage context, and it's it's like the image of God, and the devil really hates it. So he tries to pull that down and destroy that. <clears throat> 
Now, just some other examples. Hitler. <laughs> okay. Um, Hitler lived uh, with an abusive father. His father used to actually beat him, and then Hitler became this bully. He would actually um, abuse his sister, uh, and you know, and and uh, he, he became a bully. So he was abused, and so he had this anger and this this perception of the way things are, and and then he passed that on uh, to to harm, you know, in some ways. You know, right there in his family. And then obviously we know that uh, as he took his place in society, he took a bad place, you know, and he did everything that he did. But what, but what if you can trace down the sources of so many of these situations, you, you would find at the source of them a lack of uh, godly, fatherly um, interaction with, with children. And, and so this is really the building block. This is the way to change the world, really. The way to change the world is to is to help, um, you know, family, fathers and mothers, of course, uh, to to take our roles with God, with our heavenly Father, to be like Him in His love and His ways. Because you know, just because the Father's there, I mean, if you have a father like Hitler who beats you, that's that's not a good thing either, you know, and that, that's going to cause harm. And so it's not just only being there; it's about doing the right thing when you're there. And and as as much as we can flow with with our heavenly father and take on his ways and his nature then the more impact we are going to have in a positive way in our own families in our own children and then our children are going to go out and uh, do more than we ever did and that's the the hope that that should be the the goal of every father right and every mother as well as you want your kids to to do things that you've never done good things you know we you want them to go further in their success in impacting the world and and just you know in whatever god calls or leads them to do you want them to succeed uh, abundantly it's not like oh you're doing better than me that that's that's the heart i mean jesus even jesus said you know uh the same things that i am doing the same things you see me do you're going to do even greater things and, you know, of course, part of that has to do with uh, he defeated the enemy for us. And so now we face a defeated enemy. So in his name, we can go and just, you know, and there's so many, you know, Jesus never hopped on an airplane either to preach the gospel over there one day, there another, or go on a live stream and reach people. So, you know, but the point is that his heart was even greater things. You know, let's we can do this together. The same spirit which which lives in me lives in you. Let's go and do greater things. But the foundation starts right in the family. The foundation starts right by being filling our role as fathers, um, and and filling it with with a sense of just as important as going out and doing anything. In fact, even more so because it's from there, you know, that uh, that we carry the life flow out and in, into the rest of what we do as well so okay so let's so fathers let's commit to the following right number one to love god above all right to truly seek first his kingdom as we truly prioritize um you know, not only our appointments out with people that we have doing what we do, um, but prioritize our appointments with our Heavenly Father, realizing that we need Him, that we can't do this on our own, um, but we need His love, His power, His grace, His Spirit to guide us, to fuel us in everything that we do. Um, I mean, if, if you want a happy family, I mean, God must be included <laughs> in, he, not just included, but he must be the one we look to. Our Heavenly Father must be the one that we attach ourselves to. Even if it's like sometimes you feel like you're grabbing on his leg and it's a, it's a rough time, but all you know is, man, you're going to grab on. And even as he walks around you, he can drag you around the floor if he, if he has to, but you're just going to hold on because you know that's the way and and he and yeah so to love god above all to seek first the kingdom of god and trust that all these other things will be added but in that seeking first god will give wisdom ideas and he will birth things and we will go and tenaciously implement those things once we know you know what god is leading us to do we can be tenacious and we can go for it right so let us commit to love god above all and then we will in turn have his love 
with which to really up our game, even in our own families, and to apologize when necessary, and to and to just respond in the right way that everybody around us in our families is going to just sense that wow, that you know this is so nourishing, so so helpful, so the way that we are responding. Um, and, and we mess up and we need to apologize. But even that is a, is a good showcase and lesson about, hey, when we make mistakes, we recognize them and, and we say so. And we, that's, that's very powerful as well. Transparency in this world and people just, you know, being living in that way is a powerful thing. And it starts right in our families. So let's love God above all and and engage with him and wait on him and then his love will then his life flow will flow through us in our families and um <clears throat> to love and honor our wives in just like jesus said to um in genesis 2 24 it talks about um a man leaving his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one and so how, how do you treat your own body? It's like you, you nourish it, you care for it. It's like, um, you know, that's what we see in the world, you know. It's like you get all this control in the sense of uh, you just need to do what I say. But that's different than nourishing and caring for and actually serving, you know. And how, how do you care for yourself? You know, and so that's how we are to engage with our wives and, and to, to, uh, to, to actually to lift up. And, and we can all, I mean, this is, these are reminders for all of us that just the way God intends things to be. And then, and then we, we, we're constantly learning. We're constantly growing. And even when we share truth or whatever, it's like, you know, on any occasion, it, that doesn't mean we're not learning and growing these things. We all are. <laughs> Right, but we need to know the goal. We have to know where we're going, and so being one uh, means it's not like it, it, it's something we strengthen and we nourish and we care together and we inspire and we uplift. Um, in the scripture, it talks about um, what does that say? It says, um, "Treat your wife well, or so that your prayers are not hindered." Right? So there is a, a spiritual dynamic as well that the way that we engage with our wives and the way that we you know, nourish and cherish and, and care for, uh, it, it's, it very much affects our uh, relationship with God because God responds to pure heart. God responds to, um, God's able to work through when we, you know, manifest his ways, you know, in our families and, and, and then he can just, then there's no blockages, you know what I mean? So um, <clears throat> in 1 Peter 3, 7, it says, Husbands, in the same way, live with your wives with an understanding of their weaker nature, yet showing them honor as co-heirs of the grace of life so that your prayers will be not hindered. So that's that's the verse I just extracted a bit from so this we, we spoke about this you know men are kind of our nature is more rough and ruddy and we can take you know sometimes we're not so sensitive either as a result that's why women are some are often more sensitive uh, than us than, than men to spiritual things and to the sensitivities of how people are feeling and all of that because uh, by design we, we aren't our nature and we can overcome all of this because there's no male nor female in christ right so there's qualities in the spirit that just we operate by the spirit and that's what should happen but i'm talking about in in the normal the character and nature of men you know we were able to absorb more you know expose ourselves out there and take the brunt of of pioneering the way um and and protecting you know our wives and children and, and all of that so um but it says, um, showing them honor as co-heirs of the grace of life. And, you know, it's, it, it is true that in Christ there's no male nor female. So in other words, um, you know, in this world there are, there are differences, but in the eternal realm of God, there is, it's a different spiritual dynamic, and true strength is not about 
be, whether you are male or female biologically, but it's about how we fill the role and uh, of what God wants us to do. And so that is the true strength. But again, it's about nourishing, it's about protecting and understanding and, and going out and letting ourselves take the hits in order to, 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 um, to protect and to um, provide and to do whatever is necessary. And let me read this. I'll put this on the screen for you. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Let's read from there together. So Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So how did Jesus how does Jesus love the church? He laid down his life. <laughs> that's that's that he might sanctify and cleanse her with a washing of water by the word. Okay? So we as as fathers we need to be bringing the word into our homes. We need to be uh, putting the focus on Jesus, we need to be. That's that's where His life flow in our lives comes from. Through looking to Him through focusing on His Word, keeping it always before us, engaging Him in prayer as well. But you know, so the washing of the water, the Word, the Word should be involved there. It's not just about you know watching Netflix or you know something. It's it's about it's about making sure that Jesus, who is the the Word, is present in our homes that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. So this is what Jesus is doing with all of us, right? But it's also talking about, um, you know, how husbands should love our wives, right? Our wife. <laughs> how we husbands should love our wives. <laughs> okay. So uh, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So that's how we are all to, to be. We are to take seriously our walk with God so that, we can pres so that the bride of Christ can make herself ready. And we are all making ourselves ready by following God and his ways, right? So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and his bones. So we are the body of Christ. How does Christ take care of us? He nourishes, he cherishes, he, he lifts us up, strengthen the, the knees that are feeble, lest that which is weak be turned out of the way. We don't want to turn our wives or, or our children out of the way through our, through our not responding in the way that God would have us respond with love, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, all of these qualities of the Spirit of God and love overall. So, it's, so we are to nourish and to care for and to speak to like to our wives, as we would want to be spoken to because we're there to protect and nourish and care for it just as our own body, you know? So it's good just to kind of sit with this and to, to actually allow the Holy Spirit to take us into a deeper place where we realize um, how we're engaging with, I mean, look, Jesus said, "He who how you treat the least of these, my brethren, you're doing it to me. How much more... You know, our, our wife, you know, our children, our, you know, the way that we engage with them, it is, it is the way we're engaging with God and how we are implementing following him is first of all revealed by how we treat our wife, how we treat our children and how we engage. I mean, that is a, a very good thermometer to, to see how our relationship with the Lord is. And um, most of us need to work on <laughs> on all of these things even more. But so it's a call to go deeper. It's a call to know where we're going, and it's a call to to um, take seriously the mandate God has for us as fathers. Right. So, <clears throat> verse thirty one: For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, and the, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. 
Nevertheless, let each of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Okay, so... For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother. So, um, I mean, the Bible talks about that there is... It says, honor your father and mother. Um, this is the... I think it says this is the first commandment that has a promise that it may be well with you. Right, in the in the Ten Commandments, it, it's the, it's a it's a it's a um, a commandment that has a promise attached. So honor your father and mother that it will go well with you in life. And so learning to honor our heavenly Father and attach ourselves under His authority, because His authority is one that comes because it's it's um, held in place with love. His love, He, he loves us so much, and so. He, he only wants what's best, and he does know what's best. So we attach ourselves under his authority. And then, um, and then as fathers, we, we just transmit that which we are submitted to, and that loving ways and authority of God is manifest in, in our families as well. And then um, the children partake of that also. And, and they learn that it's a good thing to actually... Uh, submit to 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 God, to father and mother uh, who who love them and care for them, and and they're just trying to help them. And then there comes a point when it says, you know, man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And then this this process, this this um, this um, authority, they take that authority with. Uh, they're still under. God's authority. So there comes a point when a child leaves and starts his own family. So the direct authority of the father and mother, although there's always that respect and there, but it's a different thing. So he, he creates his own family unit now. And so, but because he's learned that there is one heavenly father who's the source of life, he or she will maintain that connection to the authority of God and replicate the life of God in a new family. And of course, you know, you, you you still are with the, 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 the respect and the bonds of love and that honor. Uh, but because God has a, a, um, a life flow, and as we recognize his authority in our life and move with his authority in our life, that's what Jesus was saying. He, <clears throat> uh, to Well, that's what the centurion was recognizing when he came to Jesus. He wanted to, his um, servant girl healed. And uh, Jesus said, I will come and heal her. And he said, no, you don't need to trouble yourself. I'm a, a man under authority. I'm also a man under authority. When I say, go here, my servants go there and do it and, and all this thing, you, you, I see that you have the authority. You're under the authority of God. That's what he meant. He said, I'm a man under authority. I see your, your authority comes from God because the things you're doing, no, no person could do. And so, so that centurion was saying, because I recognize you are under the authority of God, whatever you say will be done. Just like a soldier who was, was under the authority of Rome, he will say to the soldiers under him, go and do this, and they'll do it. It's like, uh, there's no question. And so Jesus, whose authority came from God and submitted to that authority, then carried the authority of God himself and was able to walk in that authority. And so that is the, the flow of the authority of God. It comes from submitting to the authority of our Heavenly Father and saying, yes, sir. And then we learn his ways and then his directives and then we go do them. And then he says, and, and as you're doing my will, I want you to set everybody free, heal the sick, uh, raise the dead, you know, cast out demons. Just if there's any blockages along the way, you have my authority and power as a result to to do what I said you can do. And so that then the family unit, because the father, we get our authority, you know, we abide in him and fathers and mothers and our authority from him. And then the children learn that and they get that. And then they go and replicate that family unit, which which multiplies the ways and the life of God. And then now they are connected and will be a all will be the um, replicating that authority of God in the earth just by walking with him. So <clears throat> let me click over here. 
All right. So, um, so that's why we as parents, uh, I'll speak to both now, we are called to, to nurture our children in the ways of the Lord because they need to not just learn to um, obey me, you know, but it's about, ins- it's about inspiring that understanding and knowledge and demonstrating that there is the ultimate authority, our Heavenly Father, and His ways are good, His ways are pure, His ways are love, His ways are beautiful to experience. And because you can have everything in the world, but if you don't have the peace and the love of God in your heart, you're not going to be happy, right? So that's the thing that we really need to make sure that our children get is that, you know, look, um, yeah, you, you can make whatever decisions in life what, that you want, but let me show you, let me model to you the best way. The best way is to walk with God because you see all this stuff that's going on in the world. You don't want that stuff. I mean, the, the bad, the bad, uh, <clears throat> the evil, the broken relationships, the 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 hurts, and all of the things that most of the world is experiencing. We don't we don't need to uh, participate in that because God will, uh, you know, lead and guide us. And and as we engage in His love, then we become part of part of that. So so that's why we. We want to nourish and and uh, help rather than force. You know what I mean? We need to, I mean, when, sometimes you need to, when the enemy is around and, and you need, you know, obviously there's a, we need to draw lines and all that. But what I'm talking about is in general, we try to, to inspire and to uplift so that even our children can then get that uh, understanding that, yeah, that that really is the ways of God and the best way and the best um, choice to make. So, so we need to uh, try to inspire that. Um, um, Ephesians six verse four. Let's go there. Says. Oh yeah, here's this a verse that I was uh, quoting there, where it says, "Children, obey your parents in the Lord." For this is right, and it says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. So we talked about that. That it may be well with you, and you may live long in the earth. So God knew. (laughs) God knows that this is the building block of a healthy society. If you want it to go well with you on the earth, we have to learn to respect, and uh, number one, our Heavenly Father, the ways of God. And as we we do that and children learn to do that by also respecting and honoring uh, their parents and and then they will as they mature they will understand okay this this is the way god flows and sets things up so that it may be well with me in the earth you know and so as they get that point then 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 they'll be able to replicate that and walk with God and, and replicate that in a beautiful way. Okay, but verse four, and you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So, you know, sometimes if we see something that we believe is not right or the wrong choice or or whatever, and it all depends. There's degrees. There's a degree which is something very dangerous, and you just need to step in and put a stop to that. Uh, and then, but then there's a degree which maybe you know uh, it's not the best choice, you know. But what's going to be more of value to just put our foot down, or to to let them experience that the results of those choices and um, and trying to learn of themselves why that wasn't the right choice. So these are the questions. This is why <laughs> we need to to walk closely with our Heavenly Father so we can be led by His Spirit because what we're, we're called to do is not to provoke children to wrath, you know, by just being too heavy-handed, you know, but to bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. So that's who we want to connect them to. We want to admonish. And what does admonish means? It means to explain why this is the best course of action. It's to model God's ways and and use that as a demonstration. And you see, this is why in my own life, you know, I make this choice. And, or, you know, so admonishing and training 
is different than just commanding and and all of these things. There's there is a time, but you know overall we should be um, seeking to 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 admonish and to train and to teach and to serve and and lift up and help them realize things. So that's important as well. Um, Proverbs twenty two six says, train up a child in the way which he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So if we have been doing this, you know, and really just modeling truly the ways of the Lord and everything, that's undeniable. You know, when you tell people about Jesus, when we tell people about the Lord, the, the most powerful thing is your testimony. You know, it's not um, just stuff you say, but it's about stuff that you share that, has is really happening to you it has happened to you and you're able to say this is what i've experienced and look at the results you know so that is the most powerful model that we have they overcame by the word uh, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives even unto the death so the word of our testimony based on jesus and what he has done and how that has transformed us, and people can see that that's how we overcome. You know, that, that is the most powerful proof of the pudding. So train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. So if we are modeling that with our lives, then our children will see that, and it, it, it'll just be undeniable, and, and so it'll, it'll be with them for their whole lives um, and, and help them uh, to, to that. Um, Deuteronomy 1, 31. Let's go there. And in the wilderness where you saw how the Lord your God carried you, as a man carries his son in all the way that you went until you came to this place. So this is the way uh, our Heavenly Father, God, uh, carried his people carried his children from captivity in Egypt to the promised land. So everybody in this life, you know, God loves so much that he, he gave his only begotten son, he died for them, to bring us into this promised land of relationship, of joy, of peace, of everything that God has for us. So there is a place of bondage and there is a promised land. And... God as a father wants to carry us just as, and, and it says here, as a man carries his son. Again, God is using a father as a uh, image of how he is. And that was always his intention. So you want to understand how I am. Look how a father carries his son. And so we are to be fathers, those carrying and nurturing and admonishing and making the the right choices um, so it's not just about going out there and doing all this stuff but it's, it starts right here in the home and that is the foundation of our spiritual life as well that is the very um, paying attention to to our relationships right at home and 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 take and filling our role well here equips us in the best way to to you know to then go out and to win the world you know what I mean so as a father as a man carries his son and so that's how we are to be we are to to carry and to nurture admonish and and all of that Malachi four six let's go there verse six. So it's talking about kind of the end times here. And how God will, verse 6, he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. <laughs> and now read the, the second part here. Lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's pretty, um, you know, descriptive. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to to the fathers, lest the earth be cursed. So this is how powerful 
the relationship, uh, a properly loving, functioning relationship of fathers to the children and children to the fathers um, is in, in the world being blessed, right? We need to get this right, fathers and mothers. And I mean, you know, we're, we're all included here. It's just Father's Day, so we're talking about this. But, you know, the, the, the motherly role it cannot be understated 100%, you know, and, and everything, a lot of this just applies to both. But, you know, I'm talking about fathers because it's Father's Day. But, you know, he will turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. This is so powerful. If you have, if we have this in society, if we have this in our homes, where our hearts can only be united in love, you can't legislate that. You can't say, love me, boom. <laughs> you can't do that, right? We have to, we have to model love to be loved. Love, uh, you have to love to, to receive, you have to give love to receive love. Love can't be demanded. Love is, love is nurtured. Love is experienced and grown by the way we respond, by the way that we choose to love and to put somebody else's needs and desires even bef before our own. And then as we do that, then, then you know, love is, is reciprocated and love is realized and love is um, for God. Uh, we love God, the scripture tells us, because he first loved us. That's, that's why we love him. He laid down his life for us. He loved us for God so loved that he gave his son. He became flesh and allowed himself to suffer and bleed and die when he didn't have to because he was our, he's our father. He gave birth to us there in the Garden of Eden, Adam and, Adam and Eve. And, you know, when they fell and they disobeyed and they really caused God displeasure, and he was very disappointed, but yet he didn't leave things like that. He said, okay, um, you, you did a very terrible thing. You brought death and destruction into the world, and you've done a terrible thing, but you know what? I, I, I still love you. And if it takes me coming down there and laying down my life and being crushed to redeem you, then that's what I'm going to do. And that's, that's what he did. And so, so he came down and he, he gave his own life. An innocent, he became a man, lived perfect, innocent life and, and was crushed and was suffered and died so that our sins could be forgiven, so that we could be reestablished <clears throat> as family with our true heavenly Father. And that is uh, how, how much God loves us. And so, you know, he will turn the hearts, God will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. This is a manifestation of the love of God and the hearts of the children to the fathers. This is a manifestation of the love of God and people prioritizing the ways of God, the answer, Jesus, the love of God in their lives, in their families. <clears throat> and as we do that, this is what was predicted in the last days. This, this will be like the sign of God working in mankind with a restoration of, of um, fathers and families and, and love, uh, the basic building block of, of all being restored in Christ. So, all right. So we're going to be wrapping it up here soon. Um, so I, yeah, I hope this gives us something all fathers to to um, to remember what the importance of the role God has given us and mothers again you you have such an important role um, on Mother's Day we'll talk about yours but no everything is is lots of things just apply but you know we we need to take seriously the role God has given us in life first of all who he's created us to be you know he's created us to be his child he's our father and we need to take that seriously. We need to take our role, the, the authority of love. He, he, he laid down all his love that he possibly could. He laid down his life. There is no greater way that he can manifest that to you, to me. And he said, now, 
how are you going to respond? Are you going to respond to me so that we can journey together, we can do life together, and, and, I, and so that I can use you to replicate all that is good, all that is truly powerful and eternal? I want to, to give you clarity on that, and I want you to manifest that into society, into the world, and into your own family. And, and just I want you to run with this, but you have to fill this role well, and it begins right at home and to understand the importance of the way we treat our wife, the way we treat our children, the way that we, that we be the one to forge the way you know, in our families. We go out and, and what needs to be done, and, and we're going to be the first ones out the gate to do that, to take the blows of life, to, 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 to be able to make sure that we um, do what you know, God wants done in our situations and for our families. And um, that's what Jesus modeled to us. And Jesus is actually referred to as the eternal father also in scripture. And, and um, so God made flesh and dwelling among us. And so he gave birth to all of us. You know, um, he created us, uh, but also spiritual, a spiritual birth. So a physical and a spiritual birth. So everybody's born, like in John chapter 3, everybody's born in the flesh right? Um, but we also have to be born of the Spirit. And then when we're born of you know, the flesh and the Spirit, then we become filled with the life of God and we're able to then model that and pass that on uh, to the world. So I, I just want to yeah, share that um, we are going to be implementing some things soon, and I'm just really going over and just kind of planning and praying about some things of, of ways to, new ways uh, to reach out and to, to just propagate the kingdom of God, you know, through our own and individual and together witnesses and reaching out in different ways. And uh, we need to be ready, you know, to receive people into, the, you know, uh, we, we need to have our ducks in a row as far as just uh, um, in our families and everything. So when, the, when all these people come in, you know, we'll, we'll be able to just share with them and say, this is taste and see that it is good, you know. And, um, but uh, yeah, let's get ready to birth uh, many sons and daughters of the kingdom to come in. Um, let's make sure that we're being a witness wherever we go. And, and we're also going to be tuning into this uh, and talking about, you know, ways that we can, um, especially under the, the circumstances these days and everything, to reach out and to, to be a more effective witness and to, to reach people with the love of our Heavenly Father. You know, our Father is just so anxious to, to reveal His love to people who don't know Him. And we can't just get comfy and cozy with our, you know, nice little uh, you, me, and she, and... <laughs> <clears throat> We need to be constantly pioneering ways to get out there. And, and so we're going to be really tuning into this, talking about this more um, and um, more ways that we can each become um, even more effective in, in reaching out and, and everything. So in honor of our Heavenly Father and doing our Father's business, right? And going about our Father's business. So, all right. So unless anybody has uh, boy you know I, we need to do we need to make this so everybody anybody who wants to can speak maybe eventually we'll uh if we do live streams and when we continue live streaming maybe we can do it with zoom and then live stream so others can because uh, i really uh i do like it when we're just sitting together and we can just uh we can all participate and share uh so yeah let's let's um We'll see as we go along so we can, but anyway, I think soon we can start, you know, just meeting um, regularly. All right. Anyway, I'm rambling now. <laughs> God bless you. Much love to you on this Sunday. And um, yeah, just let's love Jesus. Let's be a witness for him. Let's reach out. Let's Let's sit down with our Heavenly Father and consider ways that we can more effectively reach out to those around us, those that we see regularly, those that we pass by in the streets, those that uh, we, we when we go to the to the malls and the the shops and the and the everything, and um, 
I think there's ways that God wants to to show us to be um, um, even collectively that we can even be more effective and and focused on on the great commission that we need to do. So let's let's all be part of God's body, reaching out uh, with His love attached to our heavenly Father, propagating His life and love to the world. So. God bless you. We'll chat soon. Uh, much love to you this Sunday.